What is up guys, gals, do you awesome, awesome means and gamers of different shapes and sizes, it is me, George Dragon or Proxy, bringing you some Rainbow Six Siege Outbreak today from Operation Chimera on the PS4. I've actually been playing this on the PC a lot too, because I have all my characters on the PC version, but obviously this is a free event, so it's available to everybody on any platform that this game is available on, and it is so freaking fun! This is the first time I've actually seen zombies in a, a Rainbow Six title and I've been addicted to it. I've been thinking it's been really really good. There are only three levels. This is the thing. It's like a small event. This is something that's been happening in a lot of video games recently like say in these free to play ones or just in kind of like multiplayer centric things in general are these kind of like short time co-op events. We've seen it in Monster Hunter World. We've seen it in The Division and it's funny actually because this is actually happening in a lot of Ubisoft games, so we've had it with Assassin's Creed Origins, we've actually had it and obviously in this, The Division, and it's, it's kind of interesting because it's cool, it's it's really fun because it obviously kind of brings the community together, supposedly Rainbow Six Siege already has a massive community when it comes to the competitive side of it, but now it's actually brought a lot of people back into it for the cooperative kind of stuff, which I really love because it already had the terrorist hunt mode, but now we have the zombies thing, and it just kind of shows the potential that this series could go, and it's kind of, it feels like an evolution potentially for Left 4 Dead as well because it has a bunch of stuff that we always wanted from a Left 4 Dead game and I kind of like that, like one of the main things is obviously barricading and things, I've always wanted that from a first person kind of zombie shooter and Rainbow Six does that, like I already had really good kind of defensive objectives when it came to like say the defensive team on Rainbow Six Siege but by doing it with zombie stuff it just... I don't know, I really like that. Like, we've seen it with other games like, say, Stay of the K, where you could barricade things in a very basic form, but doing it on the go in this really kind of like smooth, fluid, kind of like progressive shooter is really nice because it actually has that kind of like zombie apocalypse feel to it where you would be barricading and stuff. Like, obviously, it's just metal walls or wooden doors, but still, really awesome, really awesome. Now, in this, you do play as free people in a little short mission going through these free levels, fighting zombies, basically, like bladed prototype inspired infected people that all wear white like vests for some reason they're all wearing wife beers I'm not too sure why but that's the design of them <laughs> it seems there's just one character model for every enemy and that's kind of interesting that they've chosen that and so you play as three of the heroes from Rainbow Six Siege you have a small selection of different ones you can play as I think most of them are just from the attacker team from the standard Rainbow Six Siege game you have to unlock some of these if you haven't already with credits and such there are two brand new characters as well which are Lion and Fink and they're really cool really Really fun. Maybe a little bit broken when it comes to the competitive side of things, like one of them, which I believe is Lion, can see people through walls, so that's a little bit cheating when it comes to the competitive thing. I tried him in the multiplayer standard and ridiculously overpowered, like no one can seem to understand that character, but is this thing where basically in the competitive side of things, he activates a little satellite, you get free goes of it, and if someone is moving on the enemy team, you can see them through a wall. Okay, so that just sounds ridiculous, right? And the only way that you can't see them is if they don't move. Now, with that being said, it means that they have to camp. It means that they have to stay in position. They can't kind of, like, cover areas and, you know, play defense, which is a little bit of a shame. And so, for Lion, I'm wondering if maybe they're going to retool him for the competitive multiplayer, because I'm not too sure if he's very, kind of, I don't know welcoming <laughs> or balanced it's it's unusual comment section below let me know what you think to that though would love 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 to know and then finally there is Fink who is actually kind of cool but I don't know if maybe she's on the wrong side of the team roles so Fink's ability is that it allows her to and I want to show you these in future videos and stuff because I've actually been recording these but I just wanted to show you the successful mission of me and Alexis playing this obviously Alexis is one of the co-op minions in this channel and so she's been able to kind of like join me in some videos, do some videos and it's been really awesome so far but this is us playing together on Rainbow Six Siege and we had a really good time, it's been really really awesome especially with microphones and stuff like that. Please try and not play this silently because there is a lot of communication that is required especially on pandemic mode where the enemies are higher in, what would you say, in number and also in deadliness but also there is friendly fire and oh my god pandemic mode and friendly fire go hand in hand and in chaos and frustration, but I guess that's the point. It's supposed to be challenging, it's supposed to be fun. 
But anyway, so when it comes to Fink, Fink's ability is that she's able to bring people back who are in a down state. She has this one, one go ability, and it, you only get one of these. So like, unlike, say, the Lion, who is able to see enemies through walls three times, he gets three goes of that. Fink has one turn ability, which is to, if, say if like all of your teammates are down. You can actually activate that, it will bring them back from a down state, but also give them some buffed health, which is really powerful. Because it means like, say if you are playing competitively, your entire team gets downed, in a rare occurrence, like sometimes you might get one or two, but still it's this kind of thing where if some people get down, they'll get brought back up and then you can give them some health and they can continue fighting. You could even say, activate it before doing a breach and everyone will have extra boosted health and then you can just take down the enemy team possibly because you'll have that extra little bit of endurance. So ridiculous again, but a little bit more welcoming, but it's unusual because it makes me wonder if maybe they should switch the medic class, which was already in Rainbow Six Siege around and have that for the assault team, which could like progressively give little bits of health, but then have this kind of like reviver, you know, it's like, or should I say universal reviver, you could just revive anybody, on the defensive team, and also give a little bit of buff of health for like, say, enduring an attack. So I don't know if that's maybe the better course of going about this. Comment section below, let me know as well, what do you think to that? How do you think to line and think when it comes to their roles? Do you feel like maybe one of them should have been, you know, sticking as an attacker, and one of them should have been the... The defense, like I really think that Fink shouldn't have been an attacker because you got two attackers from launch of this Operation Chimera, but I really think that Fink should have been a defensive. I'm just not too sure. But anyway, when it comes to the operations itself, as you can see here, doing one of these missions, we have to guide Dr. McIntosh to the evac point. So now by doing that, we have had to break into this weird little, like, doc I don't know what it is, it's kind of like some kind of like clinic or something, and then so now what we have to do is like escort her, one person has to hold her by the hand like you're saving a hostage in the standard mode while also fending off all of this stuff. Fighting a mini boss, or I guess what you could class as one of the three bosses, you have these like special infected in the game, not these things here which just blow up in your face, but now one thing that you know, with those little boomer creatures, if you melee them away, it means that they will blow up on themselves and you won't actually get hurt when you shoot them because one thing that a lot of people like to do is shoot the enemies when they're really close to you, but if you get those explosive ones, they will actually do loads of damage to you and obviously that's not a fun time. But when it comes to those in this, just punch them away. Really, really awesome. Now we are fighting again. They all have funny names. This is the thing. I've not actually learned all the names yet. We have roaches. You have... Wait, what are they called? Gremlins? <laughs> you have ones called Rooters, which are kind of like... I know they're kind of unusual, they're kind of like... What would you class them as? Like jackals or witches from Left 4 Dead, but they're able to kind of go under the floor and trap you with kind of like... Again, everything seems really like inspired by the game Prototype. I don't even remember that with like Alex Mercer and stuff like that. Really cool like game. I thought they were really, really good games, but... It's, it's, it's kind of an unusual kind of zombie kind of art style as well, like having this whole like symbiotic thing going on, but these are kind of like the tanks. They, they can't help but relate like all of these things to Left 4 Dead, because it is obviously showing those inspirations. But with this enemy, what you need to do is shoot at it, lure it into charging at you, then when it bashes into a wall, you stab it in the back, and you do this three times and then it will die. A lot of people find it really hard to do this though for some reason, I'm really not too sure why, so as you can see here, just Luring it to fire, you can see the wound on its back, and you lure it into bumping into a wall, and then you stab it. And it does a lot of damage, this is one thing, it will actually do a lot of melee damage to your team. It won't attack you until you actually allow it to charge at you by shooting at it, so it'll just casually follow you around, just kind of like wobbling around, as you can see here, looking like it needs to talk the bathroom. And when you shoot at it, it will then charge up and attack you, and then it'll, if you dodge it, it'll bump into a wall, which is good, which is fantastic. So, standard kind of tactics when it comes to taking it down. People seem to just have a massive issue with fighting it, though. It's really unusual. I would suggest not shooting it in the back. Like, it seems to be a complete waste of time, so just lure it into bumping into a wall three times. It's quite swift. The only times where it's really difficult to do it is where another special infected will join into this. You also have the Apex, which is kind of like like a summoner infected enemy who can summon enemies into the field so you'll have more than usual. So there you go, like the, the enemy kind of like bump against the wall and you stab it in the back. This actually might be the finishing. There you go, we got a finisher there. So boom shakalaka baby. Comment section below. Have you been able to take one of those down solo? Would love to know. I've actually been able to do it. Quite felt quite proud of myself. Have actually a video of me trying to do pandemic with a team of questionable skilled players. <laughs> so I will show you them in the future. But there's this really weird bit where I kind of just like carry the team and it's just really, really shocking. And I was able to take down, I think it was, it was two Apexes and then that giant tank enemy. 
But anyway, halfway through the level here. The levels are around about 13 minutes in total, which is kind of cool, kind of awesome. We're doing a pretty much a Mercy Hospital type of thing here. So you have to continuously guide Dr. McIntosh to the different areas. In this one, you go through these different doors and you have to try and collect samples, and then you end up having to get to a helicopter. And again, just fighting waves of zombies, same models for all the zombies, which is really weird. I, I find it really odd that the men and the women are all wearing white vests. Like, is this some kind of like top shop kind of, or would you call it? Or is it <laughs> is it I can't remember gap is are they kind of like promoting the gap or something I'm, I'm just not too sure but anyway you go through these doors she does like a little voice activation thing and then you go through it the person who is escorting Macintosh can't use assault rifle like or the shotgun or anything like that unless you stop escorting her but obviously that means that she will then be kind of vulnerable I don't think she can get hurt while you're escorting her I think you kind of like share health so kind of like if you get downed then she kind of just like sits there going please help me somebody guy me instead which is kind of good so it means that you don't really have to worry about her getting down damage while you're kind of like going off on your little adventure and escorting her and it's fun I really like that kind of thing so like you'll end up finding that two people end up taking the whole role of defending you but you have to defend her but then again it's that thing where I really like the responsibility of escorting Macintosh because I feel like I can do it properly like there's this thing where you want to try and depend on someone who can look after Macintosh and who isn't going to be stupid about it so like rushing after trying to kill enemies and stuff like that the pistols are really weak in this mode and so it's thing where you have to depend on two other people to defend you while you look after the objective a living objective and so when playing this please make sure that if you're gonna play as the escort for Macintosh please look after Macintosh this is the apex here the summoning infected really cool enemy does high damage like what it does is it can like force push you like this it can shoot this weird black and which blinds you but also kind of like does like about half damage to you, which is ridiculous which I think I think all the special infected do a crazy Crazy amount of damage. You can also, as you can see here, do like context sensitive kind of like melee takedowns, which is really fun. These things also buff the standard enemies. So as you can see, look as well, they do this weird like sparkly thing of like weird particle effects around the enemies, which is quite cool. And this will obviously boost them, make them run at you. We actually got loads of damage on the apex right here, which is fantastic. So what we were able to do there was, when it was spawning, we just ended up shooting in the face. There's one bit at the beginning of this, as you may have noticed, where I think it's an apex that attacks us, or it might have just been a rooter. The rooters are the ones with like the giant blades coming out of their faces, and they can teleport, and they can grab you, and stuff like that. And they do ridiculous melee damage. But what you can do with them, when they actually spawn, when anything of the special infected, apart from the giant tank thing spawns, you can actually blast them in the face as much as possible, and you could possibly kill them as they spawn, which is quite a good tactic. The teammate here has actually taken Macintosh, which is very rare for me because usually I'm the one guiding Macintosh. Trying to get the fudge out of here though, it's a little bit of a maze in this area for some reason, but all you have to do is go right back to the starting position and then you go and do the next one. You have to go collect the, the cure sample twice and then you go to the exit zone. So what we're going to do here is just, we're just showing you one and then we're going to go to the door and then I'll cut to us trying to get the fudge out of Dodge, which is obviously the hospital. Maybe the place is actually called Dodge. That would be kind of cool, actually. And then when people actually say, let's get the fudge out of Dodge, it's like, can we please just go? Like, people don't like going to hospitals. I feel like a lot of people would say, can we please get the fudge out of Dodge? <laughs> Idea. But anyway, so going to the next door, guiding our little Hozzy here, which is quite cool. I, d I do like that. I mean, it does use the core basics of Rainbow Six to kind of like complete these tasks, but it's this thing where it shows the possibility of what Rainbow Six Siege could be in the future, and I really love that. Like this whole kind of like zombie outbreak thing. Like, it's not even a zombie outbreak, it's aliens from outer space that have infected something. It's even that. It's like a satellite or something like that. We'll cover that in the future though with the next mission, but anyway, so just in this one, just defending. So we're playing as Lord Tachanka, obviously, and he's actually really good in the Operation Chimera Outbreak missions because he's a massively useful defensive player. So he gets this little portable turret which you can pop down and you can use it to, well it's stationary, but you know, you can like portable it around, you can pick it back up again and stuff. But you can defend locations spinning through these bits really quickly because obviously they take quite a while and so he's wanted to rush through it. And so he's able to cover all bases which is fantastic. So now we need to get through the door. You have to fend these enemies off until you close the door itself and so I was there like going please close the door can someone please just close the door then trying to close the door now this is a massive issue that I have and I couldn't do it and it's it for the life of me I don't know why they've done this and it is because 
The escort button is also the same button as stop escort, but also close the door, and I have no idea why they've done that, so I kept dropping Macintosh while trying to close the door, and then if she's in the way, you have to pick her back up again and then close the door, and I, I kept doing it, and it was so frustrating why they've put the action button for everything on square. No idea, it's frustrating, it's annoying, but anyway, collecting some supplies, you do get these through checkpoints, kind of like little safe houses like in Left 4 Dead, but now what we have to do is push to the helipad, this is the final bit. And what's really cool is that they completely rush you. This is this the whole thing is just like a massive race. You're getting it's kind of like a car chase with legs. <laughs> So I have to depend on my team to look after me. Alexis there playing as Ash, gunning everything down. She's really addicted to that grenade launcher as well. So unlike, say, in the competitive mode, Ash obviously uses grenade launcher to break walls and doors. You can do that with this, but also it's really useful for heavy enemies. She can actually fire that as an insert explosion, kind of like grenade launcher on enemy zombies, which is really, really cool. So it's this kind of thing where she can actually use that as more of a weapon in this, which is quite useful. Again, it's it's that kind of thing. You only get two shots. You have to use those abilities sparingly, tactically. And I like that. Also, as you can see as well, enemies can break through walls. They slowly chip away at it. The explosive ones can actually break the metal walls down, which is really cool. So please be careful of that. But I do love that whole breach thing. I do love that they kind of like break through walls. You have to try and shoot them through the little holes and stuff like that. Oh, it's just, it's just such a really cool concept, and I really hope that they do more with it in the future. Like, I would love to see even more zombie maps in the future if they did another event. This only lasts for a month, which is kind of depressing, because it'd be kind of cool to keep it, because I don't really see why they would take it away, even as it's on CGI cutscenes and stuff. It has more story in Rainbow Six Siege than the actual core Rainbow Six Siege content, because obviously you had the situations, and you had the one story mission with the CGI cutscene, one or two, I can't remember, I think there was two. But this one actually has, like, say, voice acting has character development where you see like Ash. Ash is actually the team leader in this and stuff which is really cool and then you have even like say Chachanka and Kafkan talking in it as well and it's just kind of fun. It's kind of cool to see like the characters actually kind of like talking to each other actually having those little bits of character development like it shows Chachanka I think or it might have been Kafkan and they're looking on like a mobile app for buying guns and it's just this kind of thing where like and that kind of reminded me of Alien Resurrection where it showed like I think it was Ron Perlman's character like looking at the computer screen, it was like a gun show kind of thing, you know, it's like, buy these, you've got 10 of these, they're going out of stock quickly though, so call in to da 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 and you can buy this. And so there's like a cutscene where it shows him like looking for a phone app and it, it just like develops his character, what he's about. And I just love that, it's gonna be this thing where they could have done that with so much more stuff, like you've got all these characters, do that with all the characters, like you have these little introduction kind of like things for the core characters of Rainbow Six Siege where it shows this little introductory thing where you buy the characters before you use them, like you have Sledge and it'll show him putting like a little selfie camera on the hammer and then he starts bashing in the wall and stuff or even any of the characters, you know this if you're a fan of Rainbow Six Siege, you all have like a little CGI cutscene which explains them but these actually have story explanation, like development, like, I think that's brilliant, I think it's just really really good. Here getting into a little bit of close quarters combat here and again it's just, it's just tense, it's just chaotic and apocalyptic in a sense if you really want to go for the puns but it's just fun, and I just love that it's fun. I just love that it actually kind of like does that thing where it has those tense moments. It's not just a shooting gallery. You will actually get attacked. You will actually get thrown into some really crazy moments, and pandemic difficulty is really fun when it comes to that. Like, I thought it might be frustrating. It can be frustrating if you're playing with random people. It is kind of like, say, Monster Hunter. You know how in Monster Hunter, if you're doing the co-op, you want to do it with people who know how to play. And so, with this, you want to make sure that you know who... No, you want to play with people who know how to play the actual game itself and so like things with activating the objectives You want to make sure that you barricade first put all those little wall barricades down into like the metal things before you actually act like Revive people that because there's one bit we have to actually find Jaeger. You remember Jaeger who does like the whole is it Jaeger or is it Jaeger? Is it like ja I can't remember is, is that is, is it Jaeger's for the Pacific Rim, that's what it's called, right? But like, the, you end up finding like characters, as you saw with Macintosh, where you have to find her, revive her, but when you do that, you get attacked by waves of zombies. But what you can do as well is barricade walls with the metal wall things, and you know, as you get with the defense team. But sometimes people will actually activate the, the objective, and then you'll get attacked, and you'll be still putting up all your defenses and stuff, so make sure you're working with people who know what the fudge they're doing, not just trying to rush through the levels, because that is the downfall of you doing this. And I found that a lot when playing the co-op of this, especially in pandemic mode, please make sure you're playing with people who know what they're doing. The good thing is you can play this with randoms, which is good compared to say like Destiny with like the raids and stuff where you can't. You have to actually find people from the forums and stuff, which is really annoying. There is no matchmaking in Destiny, but in this there is. And so here we go. This is the final bit. Just got to defend Macintosh until the helicopter arrives, and it's actually 
actually... I don't know if I'm let down by this or not. I'm not too sure. So basically what ends up happening is you fight against one apex. It is always an apex right at the end. And you can just gun that apex down. That is all that is required. And again, if you're playing on normal mode, this is really quick and easy. And I was expecting a little bit more of it. It's still really good. Like, you cannot complain to what they've given us. And it's really fun. It's really awesome. I could see myself playing this for quite a while, especially on pandemic mode. I don't know about the, the loot boxes. This is one thing I will talk about more in the future. This is more about the gameplay, but still really fun. And I'd love to know your opinion in the comments section below. We're about to end this here, but had so much fun with it. Really, really good. And if you love zombie stuff, are you sick of zombie stuff? Like, I'm not really sick of zombie stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm like how they're introducing new wondrous things like it's, it's a new idea it's a new concept rainbow six with zombies but with that kind of whole thing with defending and you know progressive still on the move kind of things and i do like that you can barricade doors anytime you want and stuff and so it's it's cool it's fun it's it's what you'd expect it's, it's a quick little thing but it's also it's a reason for more content and i love that but either way I hope you enjoyed this little video. It's been me, Josh Akinor Proxy, bringing you it today, and I'll see you all next time for the next mission. But still, ciao for now.